I'd like you to look at these two trees. There's this one here on my left. And there's this one here on my right. And there are various different things I want you to look at. One is the general shape of the tree. Has it got a single stem or many stems? Is it tall and narrow or short and broad? Second thing, the bark. What's the bark like? What's the texture of the bark like? Third thing is twigs and branches. Does it branch opposite or alternate? What I mean by that, if you come a little closer, look at this twig, you can see the buds along it are alternate. You get one bud on one side and then a little bit further along you get another bud on the other side. And as you go along they alternate as you go along. Now we'll, later on we'll be seeing some trees where the buds are actually opposite. So where you get one on the left hand side you get another one on the right hand side. And so that's something to look at. And then, well I mean you could look for uh, leaves on the ground but um, you might also find the remains of other interesting parts. Things like flowers, in this case we have catkins on this. Maybe some remains of fruit. A little mistletoe up there. I mean, to some extent mistletoe is a clue because mistletoe is something which uh, grows on some trees and not on others, but that, that's a little bit advanced. For the time being, just concentrate on the general shape of the tree, the bark, the twigs and any appendages such as leaves, nuts, berries, catkins, etc. Okay? General shape of the tree? Tall. Tall. Yeah, tall and relatively narrow. Uh, what about the bark? Narrow. <laughs> yeah, furrowed. Now it's interesting because it's different to the furrow of the, of the oak bark. Yeah. Uh, oak has sort of got a larger scale furrow, whereas this has got a flatter kind of furrow and it's smaller scale. So you can see the difference. It's also, the, the tree has got this sort of fluted appearance. Not that characteristic actually, I mean, it, this is a larger specimen than you will normally see of this species. Unusually large. Okay, what about the twigs? Prickly. Prickly, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, so that, that suggests, that's a big clue. That suggests that it is some kind of a thorn. And um, we don't have that many different species of thorn. And there are some berries up there as well. Aha. Uh -huh. A few berries. And, and what do they look like? Dried up. Yeah, you can still just about see the colour that they would have been earlier on in the year. Reddish colour. Reddish oh, yeah. colour. And, and some together as well. Some together. Yep. Now, anybody who didn't already know what this is, would you like to hazard a guess? That's quite good. Blackthorn, but it isn't quite actually black. Blackthorn has has a has a, a darker bark. That's really what it's called, blackthorn. Yeah, it's a hawthorn. Hawthorn. Unusually large hawthorn. It must be very ornery. Yeah, and it's quite quite an interesting history. This tree. You can see it is actually multi-stemmed, which probably means it's been coppiced at some point. Mm -hmm. See, here's an extra stem coming up, and here's a stem which is dead. And I reckon that was the original trunk of the tree. Because yeah, you can see true. that the ivy doesn't start climbing up what is now the main stem, it starts climbing up that stem, and then it transfers to the main stem. And I think what happened is that that one grew, ivy grew on it, for some reason it died, and so the ivy had to transfer to this one. And that enormous snaking trunk was ivy, is it? This is ivy, yes. So, uh, you know, it's pretty big for ivy as well. Don't believe people who tell you that ivy is bad for trees. Complete rubbish. Ivy is a brilliant plant. It, um, it's a very good wildlife plant. It feeds the bees in the autumn. Yeah, it feeds the bees and other insects in the autumn. It has very early berries in the spring for berry-eating birds. It uh, provides nesting sites, roosting sites all round good wildlife plant. It climbs up trees but it doesn't actually 
parasitise the trees. It's got its roots in the ground. It just uses the tree to support it. So it's a commensal relationship, as we had in the uh, ecology module. And it, um, sometimes what happens is ivy is growing <coughs> up a tree, and for some reason the tree becomes unhealthy, and it starts to cast less shade. And the ivy responds to that by growing much more vigorously than it was before. And people look at that and they say, that ivy's look vigorous. Look, it's killing that tree. And of course, actually, what's happened is the other way around. When trees are very young, if there's a massive amount of ivy, then I suppose it could do any harm. Have you got any comments on that, Mike? I agree with what you say, really. I mean, most people are quite... And not most people, people cast it in a bad light because of that. But it tends to swamp trees when they're dying for other reasons, and you do get quite a lot of hawthorn and sort of overgrown woods where the hawthorn have died out because they haven't reached the canopy and they get shaded out by all the other trees, start dying back and the ivy uses them as a climbing frame and sort of the tree dies but it's dying from the shade of its neighbours rather than the fact that ivy's on it. And if, you know, it's an important tree and it's in an important place or next to a busy road or overhanging a primary school playground, you know, you can watch it and if you think the ivy at some point is beginning to get in the way, you can then prune the ivy back. But, you know, all it's doing is sitting on the tree. It's not affecting the leaf area. It's only going to kill the tree if it shades out all the leaves of the tree. If you look at this tree, all the leaf is all still out there. You've got all the hawthorn twigs all on the outside of the canopy. So the tree has still got all its leaves on. It's just inside the tree's canopy. It's got the ivy climbing. So, yeah, I think it's a lovely plant. OK, let's have a look at the second tree. Now the first thing you notice about this tree is what? <coughs> there was coppice. Well, let's say it's multiple stemmed, because actually this species is one that is naturally multiple stemmed. So it may or may not have been coppiced. It almost certainly has been coppiced, in fact. Um, but you can get multiple stemmed uh, individuals which haven't. Technically, that makes it a shrub. The distinction between a tree and a shrub, in, botanically speaking, is that a shrub has many stems and a tree has one. And that means that this is a shrub and a rosemary is a tree. <laughs> 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 Not a very useful distinction. OK, now, what about the bark? Very smooth. Yeah, smooth. Any marks on it? Any pattern on it? There's a, a pattern of, of little uh, structures which run horizontally across the bark. Those are breathing cells. Well, not cells, those are breathing structures. They allow air to diffuse into the, into the tree. You know, the bark is a protective organ. It's there to stop anything getting into the tree. And, uh, but air needs to get into the tree because plants don't have a circulatory system for oxygen. So every part of the tree needs to respire. So these little uh, structures, they're called lenticels, and they allow air to diffuse in. And on this tree, they're horizontal. We'll, later on, we'll see another tree which they're also horizontal. Whereas on the hawthorn, they're vertical, and the furrowing on trees like that, like the oak and the hawthorn, which have that furrowed bark, something which develops when they get beyond their first flush of youth. Um, they become furrowed, and what that is, is at the bottom of those, of the cracks between the furrows is the, are, are the lenticels, the breathing pores. And those furrows actually allow the bark to expand. Now this tree doesn't have that structure, but you can see actually how it's expanding. Anyway, this is, this, these are all the things that you sort of begin to notice about the character of the tree, the general character of it. What about twigs? Opposite? Or, well, no, I already showed you that, didn't I? There's no point at me asking you whether it's opposite or alternate. <laughs> Any structures on the twigs? Catkins. Catkins, yeah. Some of which are flowering and some of which are not. Catkins are the male flowers. They produce pollen. Mike, have you seen any female flowers? You'll see little red spikes coming out the end of the bud. That's a female flower that the pollen from the catkins lands on. And they turn into nuts. So what we're looking at is? A haven. 
Yeah, this is the hazel. And so it's typical of wind pollination, they flower early in the year when there's wind around and before the leaves are on the trees so that the, le the leaves don't inhibit the flow of wind and that's the flow of pollen. And so those tiny little red things sticking out, those are what are known as the stigmas and the pollen falls on them and it goes down into the female flower and eventually develops into nuts.